the mission. Catch the fire, turn the ignition. Coming to your loud sound system. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good morning, uh, good night, wherever you may be. I am your host, Cooley Ranks, and I have finally got the one and only Rob Kenner in the car. My brother, 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 cool. It's been, it's been a, um, it's been a trial to trying to get this Facebook oh thing working. God. Oh my God, I'm telling Mark you. Mark Zuckerberg, I hate <laughs> you, man. Your shit is way too complicated. But listen, friends find a way, you know, brethren find a way. Yeah, we we yeah. had to link up in real life. This phone thing now works, so you know, we had to buck up in the same car, the same BMW sedan, parked in an undisclosed spot over here in west side of Manhattan. And, uh, yeah, man. And we could do this all day. This is not even, this is just natural for us, right? Because we've been friends for, well, I don't know, 30 years. Boy, stop oh, count, years. honestly, but we're not watching the clock. It, it, I know... Um, I met you before I met your brother Seaborn. Yeah, yeah. You brought the twelve inch of Roughneck yeah. into Irieite's records. This was in late eighties. Yeah, yeah. So do the math. I'm not a math major. Yeah, that's but before the Ute was born too. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, man. That Roughneck single was ringing out yeah. in the streets of New York. She had thought that in nineties. You know, God right? no, man. The tune. Yeah, I've, I've come a long way and I progressed a lot, and I still have that character within me, you know, as we know. But uh, we try not to. They delve back into that guy because that guy is not a good guy sometimes. Uh, he's a good, good use he's still, man. Guy, with a heart to gold, but rough <laughs> exterior, you know? <laughs> Woo! Jeff, Jeff in the building. What's up, Jeff? He said, that's the way you do it. I know that's the only way you could do it, man. It's the only way it could, it could manifest. Relink. We got uh, a few people in the building. Make yourself known so I know where y'all at and I can shout y'all out. I can't see you, with, I can see your cameras, though. Um, so today I'm sitting here with Rob. Hey Jesse, what's up, Jesse? I'm sitting here with Rob Kenner. Um, I would say he's a media giant. I'm not gonna say mogul because we're not getting the mogul yet. No mogul. But definitely a media giant in the business of uh, reggae music, hip hop. We're talking about Vibe magazine. We're talking about BET. We're talking about Complex. We're talking about Mass Appeal. We're talking about the the books, Biggie Smalls. We're talking about um, uh, Tupac the book. We're talking about. Um, uh, Nipsey Hustle the book, bestseller on the New York uh, Times. Rob Kenner in the motherfucking building. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We have to shout out Boom Shots because that's our thing. There you, know? you go. Boom Shots is when I walked out of the Vibe magazine offices 2009, escorted by armed guards. You know when they folded, <laughs> when they folded the publication. I put in 17 good Ooh. years at Vibe. We built a lot of things, and I realized as I walked out of there. I ain't on shit, you know, so yeah. I had to realize, like, looking at myself and say, why we build a thing called Boom Shot, so that is the foundation now. So everything go through that. But, yeah, all those other platforms that you yeah. mentioned, yeah. you know, we run our laps on that. Yes. Um, but, yeah, now we're writing books and making movies and doing things that inspire and uplift that's the yeah. whole that's the what whole we're talking program about. you know that's what we're talking about we keep them fighting because no matter what you just said there is kind of pointed to what we're saying even though you was escorted outside of that that office which actually the company which you and um, amongst many other people that work with you made you made Vibe magazine, like yeah. the Vibe, the like the biggest magazine in the world. Not just not just urban music, like the biggest magazine in the world for everybody, like like yourself or myself. At that time, Vibe Absolutely. shifted culture. There's Absolutely, no doubt about it. Quincy Jones, shout out to the OG. I I just saw he's about to celebrate his 90th birthday. He said he feels like he's turning 50, <laughs> and I love that man. He gave me the opportunity of a lifetime, bless us with so much music, but yeah. then also open a door for me to walk through and be sure. a part of Vibe. And I have no bitterness in my heart, no. but I did realize after 17 years working with that team, doing this amazing creative thing that we did, we shifted culture. We did the first Puffy profile, the first Snoop cover, the first, you know, you name it. Like we did a lot the of things. The first reggae cover too. Yeah, Sean Paul on the front. Um, we endorsed Barack Obama for president. We did a lot of things, you know. But um, at the end of it all, for me as Rob Kenner, 
I realized, wow, I need to actually own things in life and have some security for myself and my yeah. family and not yeah. just do cool shit, but do cool shit and make it work for myself and make it make sense. So, for sure. You know, so yeah, in those um, experiences of life, you know, experience teaches wisdom. And you know, if you if you take an L, make sure it's an L for learning, <laughs> and, and you apply the knowledge moving forward, um, and don't have to relearn the lesson again. I'm not gonna cut you, but I wanna. You see how he's so lyrical and he's quick with the lyrics. <laughs> his his before. So I know him before the whole Vibe magazine thing, right? That's true. This guy is an MC. Ah, true. <laughs> great, cool. Yeah. Oh, we're still here. They don't want yeah. us to be great. Okay, re connection restored. Yeah. He was an MC before mm. all of that. That's you know facts. what I mean? That's why he's so quick with these lyrics and he's spitting it like that. He in the in the heart of this guy is an MC. You That's actually I mean? facts. I love That's the select fact. tunes. I love to play music and yeah, chat two lyrics on yeah, the mic and yeah, thing. Yeah, and you and yeah, me man. used to go back and forth in the crib yeah, and in the clubs yeah, and man. you know, big up man like Tree. Jamal Rankin, Tree, big up Tree, C Bon, of course, yeah, rest in power. You know, it's a whole heap of it, uh, culture that come out of New York GT City. GT English. Yeah, man, Inspector Cluso and all Jiggy, that money. Yeah, Cluso, Jiggy G. And, and the two twins, the two twins. Yeah, the Double Trouble twins. Yeah, and man, yeah, man. Top yeah, man. Cat and Rayvon yeah, and, you know. Yeah, man, the man, them. Screech Don, Red Fox, ooh, the ooh, whole Rough ooh. Entry crew, you know. It's yeah. a whole culture out of New York, you know. People don't understand that dance hall music as we understand it as or originating from Jamaica, but New York is like a next parish of Jamaica. For sure. There's a certain style that comes yeah, from that, New York that is actually a lot of the records that made this music worldwide. You yeah. know? Shabba Ranks, Supercat, uh, Shaggy, these records were made in Long Island yeah. and Brooklyn. At, at Philip Smart Street. Yeah, exactly. So That's anyway, right. we were blessed to be Adjacent to that culture and moving in that culture, and you know. So how, let's let's that's that's great. How do you did you go to journalism school? No, I oh, went to shit. I went to college. I, I studied English. I studied English literature. My father was an English professor, and I oh. went to college. Okay, kind of in a fulfillment of you know expectations on me, and it was a blessing. I learned a lot, but I also learned that I was not going to just be an academic. I didn't want to do that. And yeah. I, I was called to music. Yeah. I was called to New York City. I got a job at an art magazine. But what I was really excited about was working at Irie Heights Records on the weekends, <laughs> selling reggae vinyl and collecting, building up my crate. Big getting, up, big up um, Catherine Tobias. Yes, yeah, Catherine yeah, 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 Tobias yeah, yeah, got, um, you know, She's on it, Facebook. I forget her name. It's like One Love Jewelry Collection or something like that. But anyway, she built this amazing vinyl store on East 7th Street right by Tompkins Square Park. And my job was to sell the vinyl and recognize the songs because no one knew the artists or the titles, but they would sing the song. They'd come in and go, do you have that song? Like, maybe do ba do ba do You know, I'd be like, yeah, that's super good under pressure, you know? So, like, you would have to use your brain and yeah. your knowledge of music to, to help to sell make the cells yeah gotcha. and then the other job was to catch shoplifting because there was oh, so damn. many people trying to teeth records because Tompkins Square Park at the time was like a shanty yeah, town. yeah, yeah. yeah it was sketchy, like homeless yeah. shanty town there yeah, so a lot of people were just trying to survive but yeah so it was a wild time and you know like Shinehead would come through Johnny Wonder would come through, Karis One would be shooting a video around the corner, you know, Scientist was there, like, just hanging out. It was an amazing immersion into this culture that yeah. I love so much. And, yeah. you know, from Irieites, I got to do DJing gigs. <laughs> And that led to, you know, hearing about Vibe being founded. And I was like, I know they're not going to do dance all reggae the justice that deserves. So I'm going to start bombarding them with pitches. And I, <laughs> I said, we have to do a super cat story. And so how do you go from, no, how, so you, you hear that there's a position there. Mm -hmm. How do you become the chief editor? How do you, how do you? I was never the chief editor of Vibe. Oh. I ended up being editor like features, large. yeah, features editor, editor at large. It's basically, you know, I resigned a job as chief editor of an art magazine called Art and Antiques, which was uh, a very cool national art magazine. I was just learning how to do a magazine, you know. Um, I love art, but this was a slightly different type of art, you know, that probably my true passion, but I, I got the experience and learned how to just do the technique of editing a story, getting it laid out, getting the pages together to the printer. I mean, print is 
kind of an old school form at this point. Now it's all digital. Um, but I began to learn that in the tail end of Vibe and then moving on to Complex. But basically it's just, everything is, is who you know. Like it's all about keeping good relationships with people, live good amongst people, do what you say you're gonna do, don't be an asshole. And you know, I've never gotten a job by applying for a job. I've always gotten it by so. someone who I know tells me <laughs> about a situation and you know, I. Uh, this comes up again and again, yeah. you know, and God plays a part and, you know, this yeah. is what it is, man, yeah. you know. Definitely, definitely. Stay so we're prayed here, up. So we're know? here with Rob Kenner, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for those who don't know, I'm going to reiterate, this man is the uh, um, former editor at Vibe Magazine, BET, Complex, Mass Appeal, and that also the art magazine you just Yeah, Art about. and Antiques. Art yeah, and yeah. Antique. But he is also Shout the out. owner and operator of Boomshot Magazine, Boomshot TV. Um, just came back from Jamaica, yeah, hanging yeah. out, hanging out with Popcorn. You may not know who Popcorn is, but popular, he's a popular artist with the dance hall and even Afrobeat. The Afrobeat. Unruly Boss, yeah, Unruly yeah. Boss. He yeah, has man. a home out in um, Ghana now. He does. Yeah, wow. and um, just dropped a big album on OVO. Collabs on there with Burna Boy and Drake and nice. Um, nice. Chronic Law and, and Tony Ann Singh, uh, Miss World, who's also a St. Thomas Jamaican native. So. Popcorn's born in St. Thomas as well. Oh, and, okay. Um, Making um, yeah, but he linked with Cartel and the Portmore Empire and, and you know, the rest has come to the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um What's some of your what's some of your your your, your best moments within the culture? Wow. I'll tell you, just you just called me an MC, and I had the experience. <laughs> of, someone else called me an MC very, not that long ago. Karis One was performing up in the Bronx for yeah. one of these like birthday of hip-hop events they were keeping up there and yeah. i hadn't seen him for a while but he recognized me right away he gave me a pound he's like this guy is an mc and if karis one calls you an mc you're an mc you feel kind of you know like yeah, you man, got the, the, king, the king just gave me this the, um sword on both shoulders <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> Light <is> you. <laughs> yeah but he's like i have passed the mic to this man and it's true because he used to be like he would have paid gigs at certain spots in new york and maybe not show up to that, but he passed through our little, you know, hole in the wall parties yeah. and spit, and that was that was a, a thrill to me. Like yeah. I've I've never lost my thrill for certain artists that I yeah. just revere, and Karis yeah. One is one of them. Definitely, so. he's definitely he's up there for me too. I mean, once he dropped this into my nine millimeter, go bang! I was like, you know, <laughs> I told everybody in the hood because that, at that time, yeah, West Indians were West Indian. They wouldn't cross over to any kind of American music they didn't like it mm. so I'm like yo no 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 you gotta listen to this one you gotta listen to this one listen mm. to this one right mm. here mm. and for sure when they heard when they heard listen to my nine millimeter go bang they boom. crossed over to hip-hop they said <laughs> like yeah I'm gonna <laughs> like that one that one you're nice that That's one a nice. boom shot yeah, yeah man. Man. well this whole 50 years of hip-hop thing is a bit of a stretch to me because we all know that the sound system culture of Jamaica is what it's led longer to than that yeah, yeah so it's it, sh long. it should definitely get as much I think the, the problem is because of the um most people don't understand what's being said right, right. you know when you can I think now that the the, the younger kids are kind of spitting more like American rappers it's, mm. it's easier to cross over that's why I think it is crossing over right and you know the other dudes who are stuck in the past kind of upset with that because they don't speak like these kids right yeah now. I think yeah. that's where it comes in that's because they don't speak like these kids they don't make them like they used yeah, to man, you, can't, you can't sit on the whole thing you have to try a new thing that's it yeah, the culture I mean, evolves at the and there's nothing life. wrong with you know, 90s dancehall is still hot. Mm -hmm. It's 100%. still hot to, to this day. You just need a promoter to take their head out of their ass and make that mix. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's like everything has its place. I'm on tell me when I was a kid, every month of him kind of. Yeah. Every yeah. month of him kind of. So you can you can be here in the 90s dancehall and still be making money today. Every month of them kind of. Them can't play in it. Them can't play anywhere. Them play. I love the 90s, but let's talk about 80s dancehall. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. It's going to shut you off. All right, so I'm going to cut the lock off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I do I'm that, it's going to shut, it's gonna shut saying, you off on the rewrite. Dance hall overall is my music. I yeah, love man. it to my bones. Yeah, like, man, I remember sure. going to see a Burning Spear show in Chicago on yeah. the South Side in like 1985. Like, Slang Tang had just come oh, out. Oh, yeah. 
This was back when I went to the show at the time it said on the poster. Yeah. I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna happen for like six hours after that. But, so I showed up on time. I'm sitting in the, the I think it was the Hummingbird Lounge mm. and Talus Hi Fi had packed every speaker box that could fit into that club mm. and they played the slang tang rhythm for the first time I ever heard it at max volume in a tiny club. Mm. And I lost my motherfucking mind. Like that was the <laughs> end for me. Beginning and the end, like, you know, the the tenor saw pumpkin belly and the John Wayne call yeah. the police for me and yeah. Wayne Smith yeah. under Miss Sling Thing. These records Tonta Irie. Oh my god. Tonta Metro. No, Tonta Irie. Tonta Irie. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think he did the one. Oh um, my god, one up in the passing one. Oh my god, that's and a big tune. And super cat with the Josh and Reddy, the same mm. way Josh and Reddy. That rhythm fucked my head up and I was like, what is this? What planet did it come from? I need to know all yeah. about it. And the pretty much the rest of my life has been like a journey from that night, that moment to yeah. like learn more what this music is all about and it led me to travel to Jamaica, it led me to do a lot of things and you know, blue shots is one manifestation. Meeting you would not yeah. have happened, you know, and, and you're a lifelong friend. You're my closest friend at this point, you know. Sure, sure. So I, I I feel like it's exciting to look back and see what got you to this point. You mm -hmm. could never have predicted the path that that led you to this point. I'm sure mm. you have a similar mm. experience when you look back at what led us to this car this in moment. this moment. Yeah. Very hard to I tell you predict. when you went, when I went in the store, right? When I came in the record store, you were very um what did I say? You knew a lot about my culture. So the conversation immersive. was very easy to have. Huh. Okay. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well and we spoke talking, the same language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was it was like, oh, he speaks my language and shit. Mm, mm. And you knew about people that was outside of that store. <laughs> yeah, right, true. That's true. Yeah. I'm in the village. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First time going to the village, I think. It was probably was it yeah, really? Yeah, it was probably the first time. I, I had no idea. Village. Yeah, because I, we got the call. Oh, manager Juan, the audio for my nothing. Everybody jumps up. Yeah, yeah, bravo. Yeah, bravo. King bravo, big up the king. Yeah. And, and computer power. We went down there and mm -hmm. um, yeah, cause they, they call the studio. Yo, manager Juan, I see you. And I'm not in love with you. Yeah, so we go down there and see what's going on, and that's how it happened. Listen. But they were talking business, and you was over there on on the on the top of this thing here. Yeah, I'm just the at music. the cash register so, playing tunes. I, I'm talking to you. I'm like, oh, and you know about Screechy too. I was like, oh, you know about Screechy? Yo, man, I was in the reggae lounge on Canal Street religiously listening to whatever DJ Rooper and Johnny Wonder were throwing down, mm. and you would hear Red Fox and Naturally and Screechy and all these big New York artists playing alongside the Super Cats and mm -hmm. the Admiral Baileys and the Flower Guns. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a vibe, man. And and from that time to this time, I haven't lost the thrill. That's the thing. Like, right. it's never just become a job to me. Mm, and I think beautiful. you can tell of course. the people that it's just a job. Of them. course, of course. They don't really know it and they don't feel it the same way. Right. They, right. You, can, you can see the bullshit. Yeah, 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 and they're not, they don't have that, that fire in their belly or the spark in their eye, like the joy, and that's why I do this, you know, I, I can't explain, nobody gave me a job application to fill out, to lead the life that I live, you know, mm. but I feel blessed that I'm still in the game and still doing it all these years later, and, you know, I, the Nipsey Hustle in uh, my last conversation with him, he said something that really stuck with me and he's like, you know, the people that wrote the rules of the game for creators, not just rappers, but any creator, writer, you know, instruments, whatever, a painter, the people that wrote the rules of the game were not creators. They were people that were business minded and saw there was like a pure connection between creators and the people that love their creation. And they said, if we could get in between that transaction, we can make a lot of money for ourselves, but the rules were not made by creators. And so you have to actually disrupt the game to make a way for yourself and su support yourself. You mm. know? So, cause we would do this for love. We, we love what for we real, do, you know? And, yeah. and you just can't take it so simply. And you have to understand that the game is not set up for your benefit. No. And so you have to look at it very cunning and very strategically and, try to 
you know, put the love aside for a brief moment, get your business hat on, work out a, a strategy that you can continue to do this in good times and bad times, rainy days, sunny days. Mm. You can always stay out there. So you know. who has that? Who has that manual? Ah, well, <laughs> Nipsey, Nipsey wrote some down, and I tried to share it in my book, The Marathon Don't Stop. There is a lot of game in that book. You know, he said. One of the last things he said is like, you know, in my conversation with him that day, which was about three days after Victory Lab came out, he said, um, I'm not outside handing out bags of money and jewelry, but the game is free, you know? And uh, when we were coming up, that's all we wanted the OGs to, to give do us, give yeah. us the game. You know, you don't have to tell us every secret, but just give us the game because if you're secure in your ability to hustle, then you not losing anything by giving away the game. and you know, in fact, it's a form of hating if you don't. So yeah. the book, The Marathon Don't Stop, that I wrote um, is a, a biography of Nipsey, but it's really also, to me, it was the game. a continuation of his idea of, like, the game is furry, and it should be spread out as much as it can. Jesse says you have to take back. Oh, this is Jesse, my good friend. Hey, Rhonda. Who else we got in here? What Jeff. Up? What's up, up, guys? What up? Jesse Martin. Jeff Lincoln. Now that's the way to do it. Yeah. Listen, we're not gonna stick around that much longer. Yo, What's much respect to everybody on the check-in. This is my first time in the car sessions with Cooley Ranks, and I just want to say, I had the opportunity to preview some music, and I'm not gonna speak on it, but there's something special coming, um, and it's it's another inspirational piece, you know. And I know you know about. You know, fighting a good fight and keeping the movement going, and you've been doing it as long as I've known you. To watch Cooley Ranks perform and work a stage is to see greatness personified. You have a gift, not just to make great records, but to deliver them to people in real life. And I'm looking forward to seeing this next chapter of the, of the journey, man. Trust me. Thank you. <clears throat> My biggest supporter right here. <laughs> uh, I mean, who are all these people on your check-in, man? <laughs> They're just hanging out. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to send them all a sh shout-out to Jess, Jeff, Rhonda, Isabella. Who else is in here? We don't know who else is in here. But anybody else that's been watching, it's been Car Sessions 2035, and I'm your host, Cooley Ranks, alongside here, Mr. Rob Kenner. And um, this is, as he said, I'm going to release um, a snippet this week mm -hmm. of the video. I'm going to a snippet of this week and then probably uh the week the week after the whole thing will come out and this is not a normal video by the way it's no, some it's, cinematic it's, it's, shit yes yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movie um <clears throat> shout out to jeff that's been shooting us some some fire videos for me too those ones are coming up too we're going to drop uh, a few more of those um and maybe we can premiere them on uh Boom Boom Shots. Shots. You already know, man. Boomshots TV. All right. There you go. YouTube.com slash Boomshots TV. There you man. go. There you go. You heard it. You heard it here. <laughs> Boom Bam. No, it's, a, it's an inspirational piece, man. For anybody that's looking for a reason to believe, this is a tune that you want to tap into and Thank you. draw strength from. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm always uh, trying to find a way. <laughs> yeah, well, each and every one of us, if you if you can't relate to that, then you're, you're lying to yourself because mm -hmm. everybody, you know, every man think their burden is the heaviest, but who feels it knows it. For sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out. Out on bud. Big respect. Peace. Peace.